Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, we are going to be working with something long and hard and potentially explosive. But before you get too excited and start leaving a snail trail, I'm talking about this. <laughs> the three grain motor that we've all been waiting for. So, it's a bit humid today, so it's uh, not a very optimal day to make rocket propellant, but we're going to slap together three grains, load them in here, and see how this massive rocket motor performs. So, first step in making this propellant, obviously you need your ingredients. So, we got our potassium-based oxygen. Oh, ignore that. Dangerous information. <laughs> Red iron oxide in sorbitol, sorbitol, uh, aka the ship mistress. And what we're going to do, if you don't know, sorbitol is a pretty powerful laxative and what what this propellant does is basically we melt the sorbitol and mix in the potassium based oxygen and red iron oxide and we create a, a homogeneous a homogeneous suspension of the potassium based oxygen and red iron oxide in the sorbitol and when that sets after we take it off the uh, the skillet or griddle in cast grains you have a, uh, a set suspension and obviously you want your potassium-based oxygen powdered so you get as, as high a surface area, uh, an internal surface area where the sorbitol and potassium-based oxygen are right next to each other and, and you get a stronger energy out of that or a faster energy release. So, first step, you need to powder the, uh, the mystery ingredient there. So, I got the... Uh, the it's a blender. Apparently, this was some kind of network marketing thing that I got from a uh, little thrift shop. So I decorated it as such. And we got to powder this stuff. I've already kind of broken this thing, so bear with me. All right. So that's nicely powdered at this point. You can see there's tons of uh, particles floating around in the air there. So. Pretty finely, you're going for powdered sugar consistency. You want that super high surface area. And I've already blended a bunch up into a super fine powder, so I keep that in here. And what we're gonna do now is break out the griddle, the girdle, and melt this stuff down. So I'm just gonna measure out the ingredients. Uh, gonna do a 100 gram batch, hopefully that's enough. If not, I'll just make another, but uh, we'll see how 100 grams looks. So 65, 35 uh, potassium-based oxygen to sorbitol, and then an extra two parts of red iron oxide. And there's the 100 mark. And now we'll just add two grams of red iron oxide. So this is a burn rate catalyst, rust. And there we go. Here's our propellant. Got the griddle here. Just gonna get her up to temperature. So I made a little mark where it, it settles into the right temperature range. So we'll let the griddle settle for a while. I'll double check the temperature. Should be around 250. That's a nice safe spot to be with this propellant. You never want to make this and fully crank the griddle because you will ignite it. Now while that sucker's warming up, whoop, I'm going to prepare the grain mold. Beautifully manufactured by Foley Defense, so thank you again to uh, Luke Foley and his team over there for sending me this kit just because they like the channel and, and like rocket engines, so this is freaking awesome. So this is a, a paper liner here to cast the grain into, and this ensures that it doesn't burn through the, uh, the casing of the engine. Basically, it's, it's an ablation barrier. All right, so we're settled. Right in around the 250 mark, couple hot spots where the elements actually run. So I'll keep it nice and in the center. Turn the heat down a tiny bit. So add our propellant and then we'll cast our grain. That's Mucho Rocket Propellanto. Now one thing to keep in mind if you're working with candy rocketry Sorbitol is by far my favorite propellant just because of, you know, the ease of melting it and the safety factor um, Because, you know, sucrose uh, sugar 
takes a, a higher temperature to work with. Although you can do the, uh, the recrystallized R candy, which is pretty good. But sucrose based repellents do have higher power. So, or a uh, higher total impulse, so the total energy. But I, I prefer, you know, that, that slight loss of power with sorbitol just for the ease of use and castability. And it's a worthwhile trade off in my book. All right, we're pretty much all liquid now. And I'm just going to stir it around to break up any potential remaining pieces of uh, potassium based oxygen, any little clumps. While the propellant's cooling, I'm just going to lube my spindle. A little silicone oil. Alright, so our propellant is uh, mid 140s. And I think it's approaching a good workable temperature now. I would say yes. Nice sticky turd formation. So I'm going to start loading it. Trying to form a nice little coiler. Gonna use this bit of wood to ram it down. I think that's pretty good. There's one grain done. I'll spare you the uh, the pain of watching the other two. All right. So I've got the three grains over here. I kept them encasing so they they maintain proper shape. Because uh, when I took them out of the mold, they still weren't completely cured. So they've now cured overnight. And then the fresh one out of the mold. Since I didn't need to use it again, I could leave this one in here. Oh, that's a bear to get off to the vise. <laughs> this is the second best wrist workout my hand's gotten in a week. Maybe a day. Oh, there we go. Got it. So, let's put this sucker together. Gonna load the grains in first. And then I'll uh, apply anti-seize to the threads. Oh, come on. Don't do me dirty. This one's really being tough. Oh, no. Crack the grain. Shit. Do rocket motors, they said. They'll be fun, they said. This one's just got to be a bear, though. The other grain's still intact. I'm going to load this other one in and uh, leave these in the desiccant bags. And I'm going to cast a third grain. Again, okay. might as well burn up the broken grain while we're waiting for the other batch to cool. A little smoke grenade. <laughs> All right, so here we have the newly cast third grain, which gave me a similar wrist workout. And let's not screw this one up. There we go, finally in. All right, now I just have to send her home the rest of the way. Uh, my NECs is out in my toolbox, so I'm just gonna use some, some good high quality grease. Also gonna smear the end caps in it to uh, protect them. And there we finally have it, our three grain rocket motor, ready for a static test. Whew, a lot of power in this sucker. Making my b-hole pucker. Tight bunghole situation. So just in case you're new to the channel, let me explain the setup here. Obviously we've got the rocket motor. Under here we have a, a 50 kilogram load cell. And then that communicates with an HX711 board, this little green board here. And this is an Arduino with an LCD keypad shield. I did a previous video on, on putting this all together, so check out the description below. I'll put a link to it and also a link to some of the parts that are easily available on Amazon. And then obviously when this fires, it clicks a relay, which sends power from the nine volt battery to the electric igniter and sends out data to the laptop that I have connected. So pretty simple system. Check out my other video in the, the link below. And uh, just in case you want to build one of your own or, or just want to see how it works. So also in the description below, I'm going to include an Amazon homepage link. It's a, goo.gl uh, URL shortened link. But if you guys could save that as your Amazon homepage, uh, that would help out the channel tremendously. It would give the channel a small kickback uh, anytime you buy something on Amazon, regardless of what it is. 
because uh, I would love to do this channel purely off Patreon and, and YouTube revenue, but it's just, it's not sustainable. Um, so any help there is truly appreciated. All you'd have to do is swap out your uh, current Amazon link, assuming you use it, to uh, that goo.gl URL shortened link, and good to go. So thank you so much in advance for any support there. Oh, almost forgetting. I'm going to put a little black powder down there to help with ignition. All right, got the e-match in, and we are ready to test. Finally. All right, we're zeroed. Ready to fire. Fire in the hole. Yeah, get back behind a corner. Here we go. All right, guys, looking at the data here, and it is unfreaking believable. Got a max thrust of 42,898 grams. That's, that's like 95 pounds of thrust from 225 grams of propellant. Now, it was a very short burn, only about 1.2, 1.3 seconds. So, very, very quick burn there. But unbelievable thrust. Not the, uh, not the steadiest thrust curve, but uh, pretty good. Now for the extreme rocketry nerds out there, this is the ISP uh, that I calculated. I believe I did this correctly. A, a few of my viewers were generous enough to explain how to calculate ISP given my data uh, on my last rocketry video. So I got a, uh, a gram force of 206, 20,602, sorry. And uh, that translates to a Newton seconds of 206. Basically the, the integral of the curve, so the total power that the motor put out. All right, so uh, I may have misspoken. Uh, I believe that was our total impulse that we calculated, which would put it into an H-class. So we made an H-class rocket motor. Unfreaking real. All right, let's take a look. See, <laughs> still pretty warm actually. See how the motor fared. Look at all that gunk. So that's uh, pretty much just solid potassium carbonate. Curious to see how the nozzle held up. I'm just gonna have to rinse that out, dissolve it away. Coming apart nice and easy. Good sign, never a bad thing. Man, the amount of pressure that was inside of this. I, I mean, it's mind boggling. Ooh, lots of crud in there. Jesus. So, whew, stinky too. Never smelled that from a rocket engine before. It's got some stank. So, lots of paper liner. Let's get the uh, other end cap off here. Ooh. <laughs> a nice, nice bit of crusty. Wow, it's rock hard. <laughs> Not the first time I've said that today. <laughs> uh, yeah, lots of gunk. I mean, it's it's just all the solid combustion products. Not too bad, though. I'm going to go give her a clean out, make sure there's no uh, damage to the actual casing. But so far, it looks pretty good. I'll give this a wash off and let's see how she looks. We'll, uh, we'll also measure the throat ID, make sure there was no deterioration of the graphite. All right, fresh out of the sink. You can see the motor casing. Great shape. No, uh, no worries there. A little bit of schmutz got in the, the nozzle there, or uh, not the nozzle, the threads. Uh, I'll just clean that out with a brass brush carefully, and that's because our, uh, our nozzle wasn't fully bottomed out, so a little bit of crap got in the threads. End cap looks great, no issues there. And for the nozzle, Divergent section looks pretty good, threads all clean, but where things fall apart, the backside. Dead ass. <laughs> yeah, so the, the convergent side definitely suffered some major deterioration. I'm not sure what the exact cause was. Uh, 
but I mean, it, it could have been bits of propellant that maybe cracked and shot through the nozzle. I, I did hear some sort of audible, uh, like spit, like the motor did a quick uh, cough or something while while it was uh, under thrust. So maybe there was a bit of propellant that snuck by and broke off. Um, maybe it was the igniter being shot out at God knows what velocity. But uh, yeah, the nozzle didn't hold up so great. Get a measurement of uh, of it though, see, see where it's at. Got the mid titties. Yeah, so it really didn't erode the throat diameter, so I'm thinking it was some sort of impact that actually hurt hurt it here. Probably the electric igniter or uh, or a bit of propellant. So that's a bummer, but I'll just machine up uh, the guys over at Foley Defense who who machine these these parts for the channel. Again, huge thank you to Foley Defense and huge thank you to my patrons for making this stuff possible. Without you guys, YouTube would have crushed me at this point already. Yeah, so I'll machine up a, a new graphite nozzle out of one of the blank ones that uh, Foley Defense sent. And we'll be back in business. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. Huge shout out to Foley Defense for sending us these rocket parts. And a big thank you to my patrons for making this all possible. With, with your donations, I've been able to do all these projects. And to my viewers out there, please consider supporting me on Patreon. YouTube has gotten harder and harder to get revenue from. I mean, it's, uh, it's gotten very, very tough. And at this point, the channel really isn't sustainable. Um, so any, any support is truly appreciated. Please don't forget to thumbs up, comment, subscribe, ring that little dingleberry next to subscribe. And I will see you next time. Have a great one.